Darnold, you also brought up a great point with COVID, right? And how that is impacting everyone today. How, how has training been impacted by COVID or what, has you, what have you seen personally? I will leave that with Mario. You do a lot of the training and I can, I can chime in on the, uh, on, you know, on the back end there. Yeah, sure. Um, well, the training has changed uh, quite a bit. Um, I think it goes really well with this idea of the, the OCM because, it, you know, we, we all have to get used to um, working from home, being self-motivated, um, juggling what it is that we're trying to do in our regular day-to-day -day lives with the stuff that we're being asked to do at work can be hard when your new office is your you know kitchen table <laughs> yeah. um so so for us uh to to kind of balance the two um it is a different uh mentality and um again there's lots of great books and trying to figure out how to um make up new habits um how to go and uh think of the different activities that we do um to so that you can keep motivated because uh, a lot of us, when we're at work, it's great to be, you know, uh, in the office because you can go and chit chat with, you know, your colleagues and uh, that can help you to then uh, get refocused and jump right back into your activities. Well, here, I mean, we could get stuck on, on YouTube all day or helping yeah. <laughs> with our kids uh, and all their activities. Um, so you have to figure out how you motivate and have the willpower to complete the activities. So the same can be said when it comes to training. Um, and so we're seeing that there are shifts from uh, just self-paced stuff, because it's easy for us to just go uh, read a book or watch a YouTube video to having more engaged uh, sessions like what we're doing right now, where you'll have instructors that will chat with you um, through materials, but more importantly, share, share their experiences so that you start to apply it. It's all about how you apply training content beyond just learning a book. Right. And obviously, it's all about how we're applying everything. And so Arnold, I do want to still toss you a question over here. And I apologize. Oh, yeah, yeah. Go ahead. So here's the question I'd love to still toss you is that within the pandemic, how have you seen OCM really and be impacted through the pandemic and, you know, with different responses? Yeah. Uh, uh, well, I can speak from some experience. Um, you know, we've adapted as a company uh, and our approach to, uh, you know, driving some of these workshops, uh, working sessions that we have with our, with our, um, with our partners, with our clients. Um, you know, we're experimenting and we're pushing uh, a little bit more of interaction with, with, with the, the folks. Um, you know, we ask that, you know, as an example, we ask that cameras are on, right, at all times. That way we can, you know, not only see what they're doing and interact with them, um, but also it, it, it helps them to stay a little bit more focused, right? Um, you know, where there's so much going on in a day-to-day, in day -day, uh, things in your mind that you're thinking about, your, your kids running around, those kind of things, school that's happening inside your home while you're having these sessions. So having that camera, for example, helps, right? Uh, we, we kind of adopted that. Um, some of some apps that we've actually worked on uh there was one that one of my guys one of my um our consultants um was working on in a workshop where it was uh, interactive right so everybody had a chance to participate enter anonymous questions and answers and again you're getting that engagement from folks right um again that that is a form of, of ocm uh, at the beginning we want to make sure people feel that they are part of this change uh they are you know uh, affecting what we're doing in a positive way uh, so those are the, the, the unique things that we're doing. Uh, typically workshops or working workshops are, we were doing on, on site uh, where we'd have everybody there. We'd start off the day with coffee and stuff like that. And, you know, human interaction, right? Um, not so much uh, these days, right? So that's, that's what we're, we're adjusting to. And folks are adjusting as well at home um, with their day-to-day. -day. I mean, I was on a call today where, where uh, the, the, their child, you know, the classic, the child came into <laughs> came into the room where she was actually presenting, and she's kind of freaking out. And it was it was a very simple, like, hey, it's fine, let it let it happen. I mean, this is the new kind of the new norm, right? That everybody's talking about. Um, and again, making people feel comfortable, right, and participating. Great. Well, it sounds like Maven actually is definitely adapting. But what does the future look like for OCM, especially how it's being incorporated in the you know from the advisory of Maven X and off Maven X offers. Yeah. Well, I mean, again, we're, we're adapting. Uh, the same principles still apply. It's just uh, how are we adapting to the technology that's available to us today? 
um, we're experimenting a little bit there and, and you know, changing our, our, um, our uh, approaches more than anything. Um, but the fundamentals are still there, right? Um, starting up front, understanding uh, who's going to be involved, who are the decision makers, uh, what is the uh, outcome expectation of, of the decision makers, the leaders that are pushing for that change. Um, and then, you know, what's available to the folks that are going to be part of this? Uh, are there going to be any uh, you know, roles that will change. Uh, who are those folks? So we can be very mindful and sensitive to some of the um, you know, some of those shifts specifically to those to those people, right? Um, and again, that's just your standard OCM stuff that we we drive. Um, but adapting as we move forward, uh, we're going to lean a lot on technology uh, and and you know, really leveraging that. Great, wonderful. And what would be the best advice that you could give right now? Other companies going through. Obviously, this is some similar things that you have faced with Maven X. Well, I can be real simple and just say, uh, embrace the change. Uh, try to enjoy, uh, enjoy it, and um, all the quirks that come along with it. Just embrace them, have fun with it. At the end of the day, we're all human, and we're all just trying to, um, you know, strive to do good things and do do better for the organizations we work for and the changes that we have to implement. Um, and yeah, everybody is going through some challenges today, right? With not only just technology, but in their personal world with changes, you know, with their, with their children, homeschooling, all that good stuff, it does impact uh, folks' um, mental state, uh, well-being, and the way they interact with their colleagues on, online. So I would say just be patient. Things will, things, things will work themselves out for sure. I mean, the technology is there. Uh, that's, that's something that we should be very grateful for. And, uh, you know, the methodologies are, are proven and they're there as well. Wonderful. Great answer, Arnold. I feel like that. And patience. I think we could all patience. Lean into yeah. patience. At least yeah. I could. So I don't know. Maybe a lot of patience these days. Back. Absolutely. <laughs> so yeah, great advice. Right. And then I'm going to throw this question over to Mario. So this one's more, again, back on the training side of things. But how has training adoption changed in your career? So we've talked about the pandemic, COVID, obviously the same thing. But what about in your career? It's changed significantly. Uh, when when I started way back, um, there were dedicated trainers who were great facilitators, but may not have been the subject matter expert on whatever topic, right? Uh, so uh, I can give you one example where one of the early on projects that I was on, we were implementing a new project management tool and uh, the full life cycle and understanding all the roles at the project manager, all the standard activities that they had to do. And then we had a trainer who came in who only came to talk about, well, here's a new tool. Here's how you click here, click there and do this and that. Well, the session, the, the, the very first session that we had was a disaster because we had some really key stakeholders that were in the session that were asking, well, why was it configured that way? Or that's not how we were doing things before. Why are you doing them in this other way? Um, so we had to actually stop. And I, I was the, you know, the uh, junior business systems analyst on, on the project, but I had to take over. I stepped up and I chatted about, well, we, we had uh, gone through all the requirements and this is the feedback and the consensus that we got from everyone. And we started to apply it in this way and that way and so on. Um, and then we rebounded. So I ended up off of that first project uh, teaching over 200 project managers how to use uh, this shiny new tool, but also how to do their job, right? Like applying PM concepts, even though I was not a certified project manager, but I could put myself into their shoes and understand what it was they were trying to do. So the approach that I've been taking for River Horse has kind of gone with that same concept. It's not just about having a great facilitator who can go and read some slides to you but rather has uh, the expertise ha has been in your shoes and can then uh, apply that experience now in an education setting. So uh, my whole team, we don't call ourselves trainers, we're all education advisors because we want to help uh, your organization adopt, especially with all this idea of OCM, who, who better than someone who's actually been in your position. Uh, if I can just, jump in and say something, a bit of a shameless plug here for River Horse. Um, I mean, there's a reason why we're strategic partners and, and I'm not just saying that. Uh, spot on what, what Mario just called out, uh, not just facilitating organizations where that's that's what's there, uh, facilitating, right? They took the test and they're gonna facilitate the, the, the training, right? 
um, with River Horse, you know, their education advisors. I mean, if I'm looking for some, uh, if I'm looking for training to provide to my clients around HR as an example, um, I'm going to get an HR specialist. I know that for a fact, right? Uh, and uh, second is, yes, I understand the platform service now and I'm certified in the platform, but I work in HR X amount of years. I understand how that works. So um, just wanted to highlight that because I think that's very, very important. Absolutely. Good stuff. I like obviously how it's shifted and whatnot, but the word that you said, education advisor, you know, Mario calling yourself that, Arnold the plug, that's great that the two of you have been able to collaborate on different projects and have success in that arena. So obviously training is changing now, but um, what would you say about the pace that it's changing? Have you noticed that it's changed a little different from an individual, from maybe the way you're managing your own team? What does that look um, in, like for right now and today? Oh, it's, it's constantly changing. Um, when you look at the ServiceNow space, we're at a good 70 major applications uh, on the product, uh, you know, across 10 major product lines. Um, and then even those, there are uh, two major releases each year. So how it is that you work with just learning the technology is one thing. And then from there, how you start to apply your uh, various job functions, right? So a lot of us, you know, what Arnold was saying, we'll start off in the ITSM space. So learning about idle and what are the industry standards or the, the general uh, uh, guidelines and now how do I go and figure out how to do that in, in service now so it ends up being a lot more uh, focused uh, conversations yes you want to know the bigger picture and everything that's available but then that whole concept of the education advisor let's start doing a deeper dive in one aspect that you're trying to implement in your organization not not just the generic teach me what service now is no teach me how to do incident management, project management, uh, governance and risk compliance, all those different elements um, on the technology. 